Hi everybody, my name is Joanne Carries, and I'd love to show you today some really cool and fun ways to add dimension and drama and interest to a photograph. A lot of my students ask me, what can I do that is quick and simple? So I've chosen this photograph as an example. I love it because it's simple and elegant and has a lot of space to play with. So let's go ahead and I want to demonstrate for you also the ways that if you are a student of mine, I would help you learn how to do what I do. So we'd be online and we'd be walking through this together. With this photograph, I'm going to simply duplicate the background by command or control J. So now I have a layer to work with, but because we're going to use brushes, I want to create a layer, as you can see here, to contain the brushes. Now, the interesting thing that I want to demonstrate is that for those of you who don't want to really jazz up a photograph, but you want to use the inherent features of the original image, you can use what a lot of people don't seem to know about, but it's a really cool way of using you know, the, the integral hue and characteristics of the original image. And that's the history brush, which is located up here in the tools menu. So I'm just going to click on that, and you can see it here, art history brush tool. And let me show you what you can do with this. So I've chosen a brush from my brush menu and it's an oil paint brush. You can get lots of great free brushes online from DeviantArt or Brush Easy. So I'm using one of those and it happens to be an oil paint brush. On this layer I'm going to start painting. Now notice the background colors are the native Photoshop colors. Black for foreground, white for background. Not going to change any of that. So take a look. With my mouse, I'm going to apply the paint across the sky. And I'm not using any color whatsoever. Simply drawing upon the color, the hue, the saturation of the colors in the original photograph. And I'm just sweeping across the sky really quickly to show you what that does. And it's really quite simple. If I increase the opacity, you can see the effect more that it's an oil type paint so this is uh, the resulting visual image if you add something like this oil paint effect. So let's say, all right, that's, that's kind of interesting. I like that. The other thing I want to point out is that in the art history tool menu, you have a style set of options right here at the top. So the one I've been using is dab, but look at all of these, tight short to loose curl. And that gives you some freedom to express the type of paint that you're going to apply. Let's try tight medium and see what happens. Okay, so that's going across the canvas like that. I'm gonna lower the opacity and see what happens. Let's go to another layer and paint there. Alright, so basically the paintbrush is borrowing from the original image and that is exactly where the art history brush is sitting. So all of the paint deposited, or so-called paint, is taken from this original image. If the area that I paint over is dark, then 
you're going to see darkness deposited in that area. So let's move on to a different part of the image and create a new layer to work with. This is a great way of showing exactly what I mean by not adding color. So I'm going to use Dab, same brush, and just make it a little bit smaller. Come down here on the left and let me increase the opacity. And let's take a sweep over the grass. Notice, not using green, I'm using only the green in the photograph. Well, I think that's really cool. And if I come over here to the bottom, I want to pick up the green here as well. And you can increase or decrease the capacity, uh, I'm sorry, the opacity as you like. And now let's move on to the next part of the photograph. I want to, again, use the same brush. This time, I'm going to sweep it across the foreground. And this is a, a great illustration of how the brush picks up the colors that are residing within the original photograph. I'm just sweeping across and depositing the so-called paint on the foreground. And there we go. So now let's take a look at the zebra with the very same brush and a new layer. I'm going to begin depositing paint on the zebra. And I'm going to crank up the opacity. Now, as I move across the body of the zebra, You can see how it's spreading the effect. Now for this, I'm going to change quickly to a different brush. This is a dry brush that I've saved in my brush menu. And let's just see if that's going to have... Yes, it doesn't quite splatter as the other one seemed to do. Make it even smaller. And I'm using Dab. So again, it's just it's taking from the native colors from the zebra in the original. And so you can do as much or as little as you like. And let's say, all right, we're going to stop there. Because now, you can change the opacity of that paint effect. If you're looking for something more photorealistic, then bring the opacity all the way down. And if you'd like something kind of in that area, leave it like that. So if we went no, no further beyond this, you'd have a really interesting image compared with the original. So let's turn these off. That's the original. And that is the painted effect. So, okay, that's really different. But let's go beyond that. I'm going to add a new layer and show you one more thing that I really like. Now let's with this history brush, let's go into the brush menu and I'm going to use the color dynamics to change up the hue and saturation. This is really fun because again, we're not changing the native foreground or background colors we're simply borrowing from the original image. So I've kicked hue and saturation jitter up, brightness. So those three effects will apply per tip. And let's see what happens. Let me increase the size of the brush. 
and I'm going to use not dab but tight medium. Okay. Increase the size there. There we go. Now, well, <laughs> all right. Let's let's get a little bit more conservative. And I don't like tight medium. Since I haven't rehearsed this, honestly, I'm, I'm just playing, which is what I strongly encourage you to do. And when I'm working with students online, this is what we do together. So again, I'm just going across the canvas and depositing this oil brush paint effect and brings out some of the interesting color within that photograph. So we've got some pinks over here and up in this area. So you can see I, I'm not doing a whole lot except just sweeping across the painting. And If you like that, you could finish there. You could keep on going. There's simply no limit to this. That's why I love Photoshop and I love teaching it. Because what I, what I love to do is watch as students discover their own unique style and characteristics, the ways of using brushes or any of the tools in Photoshop to make their photographs pop. I've seen students be able to very quickly enhance their portrait or landscape portfolios and deliver something really unique and different to their clients. There's just, as I said, no end to this. If, if this is something that you'd like to learn more about, just give me a holler, visit my website, easyphotoshopmagic.com. I enjoy teaching private lessons or small group classes. So I hope to hear from you, and I hope you've enjoyed this how to paint with brushes tutorial. So bye for now. Thanks again.